Liebe Gäste, herzlich willkommen zu... Dear guests, welcome to the Audi Digital Sneak Preview for the RS3. Now we are delighted to present you with the latest generation of a compact athlete in the compact model of the A3. This is the second generation of the RS3 saloon and the third generation of the RS3 Sportback. They are the entry into the world of the RS models. And of course, they connect with the success of the preceding generation. How? Well, with a new level of drive dynamics and top performance. When it comes to acceleration and top speed, the RS3 offers best ratings in its segment. And also in lateral dynamics, it is on a complete new level. Thanks to the torque splitter, which can fully variable distribute torque on the rear axle and for the first time comes to deployment in an Audi model. Now, in interplay with the semi-slick tires and the RS3 specific drive modes, it really increases performance immensely. Our drive expert, Mike Diesner, will take you along on a trip at the limit and we'll talk you through the torque splitter and the effects on the RS3 drive modes. Hi, my name's Mike Diesner, and today I'd like to show you the two new modes in our RS3 prototype, RS Performance and RS Torque Rear. Let's start with RS Performance mode, which I can activate here. This is our racetrack mode and is designed primarily for our Trofeo R tires, which we're now offering for the first time. But today, we're using our series tires, P0, to show that all of our customers can have the full driving experience even with standard tires. Let's begin with the launch control start with our new launch control traffic light with its red, yellow and green. Then you see the shift light, meaning we have full boost pressure and we're ready to go. You can see that the car is pointing right where I want it. I'll just turn the wheel a bit. The car is going exactly where I want it to without any over or understeer. Now we're coming up to some S-curves in the road and you'll see that the vehicle really is not understeering at all. And now I have a choice. I can steer the vehicle in exactly the direction I want using either the steering wheel or the gas pedal. Let's look at the other mode. Torque Rear Mode, also known as Drift Mode. This allows us to deliver 1,750 newton meters to the left or right rear wheel. To demonstrate this, let's go for a spin. Even in Drift Mode, you can see that we can maintain good control over the car, even when navigating tight S-bends. I can oversteer the car on every bend if I want to. Let's turn left here to create some additional drift and to demonstrate once again just what this car is capable of. Unlike RS Torque Rear Mode, RS Performance Mode neither understeers nor oversteers. The car always maintains a neutral line along the road. In contrast, RS Torque Rear Mode, our Drift Mode, is really an oversteer mode that you shouldn't deploy on public roads, only on the racetrack. Hello, Mike. Hello, Mike. Hello, Julia. We just saw there really racing the car in the clip and now welcome here in the studio. Now, Mike, we saw in that clip how you as a driver can go through a different RS performance mode and RS torque rear mode. The RS performance mode, of course, offers a number of different settings. Can you tell us a little more about that? Sure, I'm glad to do so. The RS performance mode, conceptually made for the racetrack, but can also be driven on a normal road, has, of course, different settings for the steering. We can choose it between the three different modes for the steering and if you have the DCC, the adaptive chassis, you can switch between comfortable and sporty. This is, of course, made for the situation if you go on, shall we say, a track with poor road conditions like the Nürburgring, you would rather go for comfortable, but on a Grand Prix track like Hockenheim Ring, you would pick the sporty setting. Now, you said earlier, you can have 1,750 newton meters of torque to go to one wheel at the rear axle. That is a rough outline how this works, but you've got an exhibit here with you of the torque splitter where you can talk us through the various components and the workings. So tell us, how are they interplaying with one another? 
So here at the front, you have the card on shaft. This is the front end of the car. And here we would have had the Haldex clutch. But this is omitted in the new model, which means the force from the car shaft goes straight to the crown wheels. And on the left, on the right, we have a clutch. These clutches here then have the drive shafts connected to the left and right wheel. But this is, if I can show you once more in the animation, how it really works. You see it nicely here. What we need? Well, we need an engine, we need a transmission, we need the front axle diff, and of course, we need the torque splitter at the rear axle. All of this is managed and controlled by a host of different control units. We'll start here with the wheel sensors and the steering angle sensor that all feed their data to the ESC, and then through the ESC, transport that data to the rear axle. The engine ECU, the transmission ECU, sends all that data to the rear ECU that you see here. These two control units are positioned to the left and right, interconnected, as you see here, by that red connecting line, so that they can communicate with one another. But here, you see once more, how is torque really distributed? From the cargo shaft, from the front, you have the torque going to the rear, to both clutches, and they then, of course, forward that torque to the two drive shafts. But if you go into a corner, and the rear right-hand wheel here would close the clutch and put extra torque to the wheel. You see this here in a second animation in more due detail. Here you can see it. this is a right-hander and you're accelerating the left rear wheel to really push the car better into the bend. The whole system is not only used to make the car more agile, now we can even make it more stable. As you see here, on a wet surface, we're stabilizing the car by having the exterior wheel torque removed and given to the inside wheel. Well, as you said, it's more agile now, but of course, with Audi, torque vectoring as a system we already well know, which at the limit in the corner will decelerate the wheel on the inside of the curve. Can you have this in combination with the torque splitter, or is this a system that's obsolete now? Oh, no, that system is still on board. We use both. But of course, we now use the torque through the torque splitter on the rear axle, but at the front end, combination with run we also have of course torque vectoring also deployed but this is managed by the modular chassis controller the modular chassis controller is something we also have in the a3 that was introduced last year and of course this is responsible for the lateral dynamic components how is that interplaying with the torque splitter then well as you just said we know the modular drive dynamic controller from the basic model here simply rounded out by the torque splitter, which means we take our chassis, our adaptive chassis DCC, connect that with a brake, and that is our torque vectoring controller and the torque splitter. And that then simply gives even better lateral dynamics. Well, thanks, Mike, for that technical deep dive. The explanation and the drive in the RS3 prototypes have shown you what customers can expect from this car. It's the interplay between torque splitter, the RS3 specific drive modes, and the five-cylinder engine that make this compact athlete even more performant and unique in its segment.